the raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Once upon the midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor," I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this, and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books a seas of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore. Name is here forevermore. And the silken, sad, and certain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into the darkness peering, Long I stood there wandering, fearing, Doubting, dreaming dreams, No more to ever dare to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, And the darkness gave no token, And the only word there spoken Was a whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, And an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, Back into the chamber turning, oh, my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what their art is and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment in this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy to smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore, So thy crest be shorn and shaven thou, I said, art sure no craven. Ghastly, grim, and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore, tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Britonian shore. Goes the raven, nevermore. Much I marvel this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevance they bore, for we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast above the sculptured bust above his chamber door, with such name as nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a further than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, Other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. And the bird said, Nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, Doubtless, said I, 
What it utters is its only stock and store, Got from some unhappy master, Whom unmerciful disaster Followed fast and followed faster, Till his songs one burden bore, Till the dirges of his hopes That melancholy burden bore of Never, never more. This I sat and gazed in guessing, but no syllable expressing through the foul his fiery eyes now burn into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet linings that lamplight gloated o'er. But his velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, never more. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, song by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God had lent thee, by these angels he has sent thee a respite, respite and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh, quaff this kind nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore. Goes the raven, never more. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Goes the raven, never more. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels named Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, goes the raven nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked up starting. Get thee back into the tempest and the night's Plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lies thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Goes the raven. Never more, and raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting, on the pallid bust of Pallas, just above my chamber door, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon that is dreaming, and the lamplight over him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore.